about misconceptions for, uh, of pins in general? What, do you want to go into details there, also mathematically? Yeah, so, so one of the things that's always very interesting about pins is that you have a lot of people just kind of show up and just kind of say, I, it's going to solve my PDE 100 times faster, so I want to use a pin. And that is just so not right. Um, you know, I, I think that if you look at the, like, the, for example, the last paragraph of the DeepXD paper, so, you know, the DeepXD paper is the one that comes out of Carniadakis's lab at Brown. So, you know, they're like the creators of the PIN methodology. You look at the, the last paragraph of, of that paper, it actually will tell you that, you know, if you're just trying to solve a PDE, a pin is going to be a lot slower than, than solving it, right? Like, you know, if, if you, this, this goes in every paper. Um, if you're trying to do parameter estimation problems, well, solving the inference of the neural network at the same time you're trying to infer parameters from data, you know, that, that that's where it kind of, you know, the, the performance starts to, to work out. Also, a lot of the cases where, that the papers are describing are cases where your, your PD is non-local. So if you have like an integral inside of your PD definition, we have fractional derivatives. So if you have like a, you know, uh, DDX to the one fifth power, like the, these kinds of weird cases are where people are showing that, like, yeah, pins do really well because of this non-local behavior because you're approximating the whole solution at once. But if you just have, you know, uh, the heat equation or, you know, diffusion advection, you're not going to do any better than your classical method. And in fact, you're going to do a lot slower than your classical method because these classical methods are made in many ways to be like optimal solutions to them, right? You, you, like part of what you do in a numerical analysis class is you prove that, you know, you have this high order convergence and all these really nice properties. And, and you know, when you have something like Gaussian quadrature, you prove that you have like the optimal convergence of the quadrature methods. And pins don't have those things, right? Neural networks just generally do not have those um, have have those kinds of guarantees or those behaviors. Now, what that means what that means though is that you really have to look at cases where traditional methods were not very good, right? So, like what I mentioned with integral differential equations, if you stick an integral inside your differential equation, integrals are are generally a non-local operator, right? You you cannot um, represent an integral by you know just small nudges at a given point, right? You, it's it's global over over the whole domain that you're integrating, um, and so that really that, that really messes up discretization types and methods in a lot of ways, right? Because you you it's, it makes it very difficult to to isolate that here I'm going to just look at you know uh, this point and maybe a point to the left and point to the right because if you need to evaluate an integral you need all those other points in the integral, um, so you need to use bigger implicit methods and all sorts of things and and in those cases where the where the traditional methods aren't as good. Uh, these you know neural network based methods and, um, tend to do very well, and also very high dimensional cases are very good for neural networks. Um, so if you have a hundred dimensional PDE, like um, it sounds unreasonable, right? Because you're like, oh, I have three physical dimensions in time, mm -hmm. but you know a, a hundred dimensional PDE show up in cases where you're naturally representing distributions over the probability distributions over states. So for example, Schrodinger's equation has a dimension for, uh, well, it has two dimensions for every particle, right? Because it has a location and a, a momentum, um, you know, because it's representing a wave function. That wave function has a location and a momentum for every particle. So if you have, you know, three particles, there are six dimensions to your partial differential equation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you think about these finite difference methods, um, you know, if you have 10 points in every single dimension, and then you say I have 100 dimensions, well, then you have 10 to the 100th power points, which I think it, I calculated this out once. It's you, you'd need 10 to the 82th power of uh, terabytes of RAM in order to hold that solution just one time step, right? Um, so finite difference methods and even finite element methods just do not scale to very high dimensions, and so this is another case that works out. So I mean, so so I think that in general, like the misconception of with, with pins is like you see a paper that does like you know here I accelerated something with a pin, um, and they ask the question of like oh if I just take it on the problem that I'm already working on, is it faster? If you if if you factor in training time, probably not unless you're working on one of these problems that is very difficult, right? So if you have integral differential equations, high di high dimensional problems, or if you're doing something like parameter inference simultaneous to your PD solving, then yes, you, you, you know, pins will do very well, but it's not going to, you know, it's not going to do better than your, than your traditional fluid dynamics method, unless you kind of incorporate a lot of the tricks of fluid dynamic methods into the pin stuff, which some papers are doing. So. Mm -hmm.